it was a very special day yesterday. For those who have followed my channel for a long time, you know that I have played Robot Arena 2 for a very, very long time. Well, yesterday, Robot Arena 2 turned 20 years old. Seriously. This game, which actually still has a semi-active community, like a fairly, you know, small, but still pretty active community, lots of competitions, mods, you know, all this uh, crazy stuff, it's still, you know, it's 20 years old. Kind of crazy, really. Now, in typical, now, this video is a little bit different. We're going to be covering a bunch of different things, because I just want to look at a lot of Robot Arena 2, maybe some Robot Arena. I want to look at a bunch of Robot Arena goodness. Starting off with the tried and true DSL. Now, really, I don't have a lot to show here. Um, first things first, we've got the robots here that I've. First things first, I got a fresh install, and you know, right now I'm just looking at some robots. Oh, I haven't put the keeper in. I forgot to bring the keeper over. Okay, well, I mean, I can show you this. Oh, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> I showed it to the Orc Corp as, 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 it, as I made it because I was thinking, haha, fun. Anyway, yeah, it's a little top hat spinner. That is not why we're here today, but I thought it'd be fun to show anyway. So I brought Barbarian along because I don't actually plan on doing anything with Barbarian at this point. I, I did what I set out to do. But Barbarian is like one of my oldest effective designs back in the days of stock and I'm still happy that I managed to translate it into DSL even if it would never win a fight ever. It's actually a little bit of weight. I wonder if I could put a fork down. It's just a singular. <laughs> Maybe not. I've got two different versions of Hell's Angel because I actually do want to just do like another version of Hell's Angel because there's like a new I know that. Uh, Orc is probably going to do another series of, you know, another tournament. And I want to have a version, but right now I'm torn. Because on one hand, I want to take... Because on one hand, I want to take some of the stuff that I, you know, that I was trying to incorporate here. But, at the same time... I kind of prefer this one. Despite how long I've been playing Robot Arena 2, I'm still just bad at the game. But, I'm having fun, so that's what really matters. Wipeout. I've got to fix Wipeout big time. It's um, it's it's a bit of a mess at the moment. It's mainly this wedge. Like the flipper is still just well, the flipper needs like realigning, obviously. But apart, but like this wedge is the source of all of my misery, because this should be like a decently effective robot. It was originally, but I have screwed the wedge up so royally that it just can't get under anything and that means that this it doesn't matter if you've got a lovely flipper which i believe wide pass flipper is pretty dang good you know and it's got decent drive you know it doesn't matter if it can't get underneath anything eh, let's just flip the car i actually went right under the car okay that's there we go but the one that i've been working on most recently is new versions of Death Valley. Now there is a 2023 Death Valley variant that I've been working on, um, which I will look, show you in a moment. But for the time being, I've been like experimenting on the old 2022 Death Valley, um, which you know has four-wheel drive. It's got the usual, you know, the, it's got this wedge because kind of the whole main thing of Death Valley is it's not meant to be some crazy machine. It's just meant to be tough as nails, which. It did pretty well in a fight against Ursula, you know, like, I take my victories when I can get them. <laughs> you know, Ursula was pretty tough, and that's kind of one of the main things, you know. But, yeah, and, in fact, one win for me, this robot's actually decently low to the ground in my testing. I know this is just a full-body shell, but... I promise you I was wedging robots like crazy in my testing. I haven't fought Snapdragon before, but hey, should be fun. I like the fact that there are these actual ro Look at that, see? Right under. But look, I'm trying to lift, but I cannot lift. You can hear the, the, uh, the it's tempting to. 
This is my lowest to the ground robot, but the grabber and lifter can only grab. So of course, now the question is, why? Why is it doing this? Why is it that the moment I finally get a robot with low ground clearance, I can't seem to get it to operate? I think I figured out why. Because dumb me didn't understand what one of the new parts. This is a slow piston. This is for axes and hammers, not lifters. Oh, God. Which means, if I... <laughs> Which means, what I need to do is I need to deconstruct this, remake it with a proper piston, and hope to God that I can do it one-to-one -one again, including the starting angle. I'm... <laughs> I, uh, I am uh, I am leaking sodium. I am so salty about that. The finally, the first time, it, you know, I finally made a robot that's low to the ground and it doesn't matter. Oh. <laughs> okay, so before we look at this, let's look at this. I Note the unfinished because quite clearly I am not going to allow the robot to be this long, but... I want to show the rough idea of what I'm going for. So, in a similar fashion, I'm trying to do the do the uh, the grabber and lifter to be you know like um, like the their value we just saw. So I am trying to recreate it somewhat. Um, it's way too big. It's way too big. So I am going to work on that. But it's got a stronger motor and six wheel drive. So you know that's pretty nice. Also, the forks are obscenely long. I don't think I need to do that. But, you know, the, you get the general idea. Like, the idea is going to be that at some point, you know, that I'm going to try and incorporate a lot of the old Death Valley design. So, obviously, there's a lot of changes that need to be done here. Um, but I'm trying to see if I can incorporate a lot of the old Death Valley design with six-wheel drive. Because, obviously, the main idea is going to be... Yes, the uh, angle is wrong, and I need to fix the drive. But the hope was that I could make Death Valley a little faster. And be able to just suplex machines like it's nothing. Because if I can do that, and try to keep some of that Death Valley durability, I don't know if I'll be able to fit wedges, but, you know. I feel like this could be an interesting route to take. Um, the back wedge looking thing. That was purely aesthetic. I just thought it'd be a cool look rather than it being a box. Uh, but I might change that. <laughs> it might not be worth it. Here it is. The latest version of Lord Scarecrow. You want to know the big difference? It's an extender bot. I've made an extender bot, which... It's not the first time I've done it, if you've followed my channel before. But... Look at that. Um, these are here purely for uh, self-writing reasons. Like, I, I don't know if it'll show in when I do this, because Lord Scarecrow sometimes falls anyway. But, look at this. Yeah, Lord Scarecrow is a bit on the top-heavy side, unfortunately. So it's, you know, prone to tipping itself over. But it has all the main things. In fact, if I go here... Oh, wrong one. If I just tip myself... Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, I can self-right. In fact, the, pu the, the punching arms are actually more powerful than before. Oh, I've not actually been in this situation before. You see, I needed the spikes to be able to have some form of being able to get Lord Scarecrow to still move around and not get stuck on his sides. But the spikes on the wheels actually caused more issues than they used to, so I had to give that one up. Yeah, there's definitely still some issues that I've got to figure out with Lord Scarecrow. It, it, let me make it clear. Lord Scarecrow is not competitive, and I am never going to be trying to make it competitive. But I probably do want to, like, work some things out so it doesn't die straight away. Now, another thing that I'm doing is an experimental, but, you know, experimenting with spinners. 
Um, again, these are more conceptual than anything else. It's just me playing around and just seeing what I can do because I I don't dabble with spinners all too often, to be honest. With, I you know with you, and I thought you know I might as well just try to throw some concepts together and see what happens because you know it's kind of the, one of the things that helps keep me into Robot Arena too is just messing around even if the design doesn't go anywhere which pretty much none of these will anyway this was megalodon a concept for a backlash style robot it's similar to the poison jab robots that i made hence the color scheme um did i name it megalodon yeah megalodon is also because you know i had a robot in robot rumble 2 that also went on this concept of the Deep Six Drizzle slash Backlash slash Nightmare type design. The idea is, of course, that this has a ve is, has a very powerful motor. And yeah, that's kind of its thing, really. Oh, man. I think the fact that Terror Wheel existed has just consistently just had me... Ex like. Ever since I found out Terror Wheel existed back in the day, I think it's influenced my 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 way, the way that I make robots to this day. This is a uh, this one I actually might follow up on. Like this is one that I actually like this and uh, Megalodon. Are, actually, everything. Actually, you know, you know, I'm gonna get rid of Demon real quick. As much as I call it a stress relief, op, these are the robots that I'll probably look into some more. Um, so this is the Great Orca Lord. Um, but basically I wanted to make an orc themed robot, you know, my, base, because of my good friend the orc court. And I wanted to try and do that kind of like, Sanawayachi, Ursula, you know, style robot. Obviously, very unfinished, again conceptual. And one of the things is the body is too small. Obviously the wheels are poking out, but because I picked like a really powerful motor, this thing gets out of control way too easily. It's actually working fine right now, but yeah, I actually need to make the body wider and also figure out how to make the connection a little bit more seamless. Because right now, it's obvious. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, this is what I mean, by the way. The robot really does not like being in this kind of situation. Actually, self righted That's unexpected. Here was me looking into a nightmare-style robot. First problem, that spinner is way too high. I mean, I guess it hits, but, like, it's way too high. I need to make it a little lower. Um, secondly, it's on stilts. You know, not not even, like, the obviously the Nightmare design, but, like, obviously, because it's conceptual, I've made the drive two exposed drive motors on extenders. In the process of trying to make, trying to see if everything else works, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta check, you know, make sure that it can drive. Bleh. And then when I saw Ripperoni, I had to make elbows. <laughs> <laughs> elbows. Oh, this, like, this likely will never be anything I actually finish up on. I should probably just, you know, I, I said I was going to continue the other robots. I'm probably not going to continue El Bozo as anything other than a joke. Oh, my God. But I saw Ripperoni's design, and I was like, that is amazing. And so I decided to just make an L-shaped robot and call it El Bozo. There's nothing more to say here. So, yeah, there is more stuff that I'm working on, but I'm in the process of switching everything over. I'm going to be trying to... Uh, upgrade the keeper well i've been trying to upgrade the keeper that's a bit of a process on its own um i'm trying to make you know i'm trying to like make different robots as you can see one of the things that i'm doing is i'm making little categories of weapon types and these are where i'm just going to go wild like stuff like ignis industries and wtf are kind of where the the real robots are they're the ones that i'm like okay these are robots that i'm either about to enter into a tournament or i'm working to enter into a tournament um, then I'm going to just have the weapon category ones where I just make these conceptual robots that might never see the light outside of a YouTube, outside of my videos. But, you know, it's a place for me to just kind of go wild, go stupid, go crazy, <laughs> and just see what happens.
Man, me just talking about robots on DSL actually took way longer than I thought it would. But we're not done. We're far from done. Let's go. Of course. Of course, with all the, you know, with our RA2, there are all the tournaments as well. And I've muted the game. Let me unmute it real quick. You know, with... Oh, man. And of course, one of my favorites is... And of course, one of my favorites has always been Orcs Wars. We're looking at Orcs Wars 1 robots here. My goodness. Um, and, I, and man, it's always so much fun, you know. I do terribly in them. <laughs> but I just find them so much fun. There's so many incredible robots. Like, you know. And it's always just so much fun just to get to see the kind of crazy stuff people come up with. Uh, in fact, if I can be bothered to, there'll be some more recent ones on screen just showing, you know, some of the crazy stuff, you know, that, you know, going on. Like, if you want to try this game out, then, hey, there's something for you. You know, some some tournaments that you could enter, or at least check out, so, you know, if there aren't any entries being accepted for them. Of course, with all the emerging games that are coming out now, you know, we've seen... We see stuff like Bashbots on Gary's Mod, we see, you know, Robot Rumble 2, we see Pitbots. You know, with all of these, there's undoubtedly going to be more emerging tournaments in different games. But I think I'm just so happy to see that, like, no matter what, these end up... These games, are, this Robot Arena 2 has still managed to survive just a surprisingly long time. Okay, well that flipper just went into the pit. Holy Wings is gone. Oh no, Nors. Oh, Mechanica! Oh god! <laughs> it's good to see punching robots. Oh man. Come on, Nors. Oh, Mechanica is uh Oh no. Poor Mechanica. Oh my god, Nors, you ah! That's incredible. Oh wait, Nors, are you stuck? This is incredible. Oh my goodness. Let's move on, shall we? And Orcs Wars 2, the very first tournament I think I ever entered. In fact, I think this is it. Look, there's the original Hell's Angel. Look, I've even put a little my channel icon on it. I can't remember the actual reason. Oh, there goes. <laughs> well, there goes Hell's Angel. Oh my goodness, because Hell's Angel unfortunately doesn't have a Shremek in this original variant. Uh, that is because I thought that it was going to be fun. I thought, oh, it'll always land in a position where the hammer can be used. And then I was like, oh, well, uh, maybe the AI will be so aggressive that it'll keep flipping Hell's Angel over. Which helped to a point. It got to the heat final, but yeah. Go on, Nors, you can do it! I believe in you! Hell's Angel, despite being out, is still looking like it's trying to get back on its feet. Yay! Yay! Hell's Angel! Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. If I remember correctly, I think the whole thing was Hell's Angel. I kind of made to fit the uh, the aesthetic, and I was thought, oh, you know, I'll put the the, the icon on because it kind of because it really fits. And then like I remember, but like like some you know friends of mine were like, oh, it, you know, is this advertising? I was then I was like, no, no, that wasn't the intention. No. <laughs> oh man. That's it, come on, Nors. Nors, you gotta back away. Nors! 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 <gasps> Yay! Orcs Wars free. Oh, man. Here we've got, you know, my flipper wipeout, which actually started in Robotal Wars um, back in the day, um, which was originally a pseudo super heavyweight. I remember Robotal Wars 1 had a really weird weight class of like a thousand as opposed to like. I think it was a thousand, wasn't it? Eight hundred was heavyweight. A thousand was like Robotal Wars, and a thousand two hundred super heavyweight. If memory serves correct. 
And this was like when I turned Wipeout into a regular heavyweight. And yeah, like, obviously, you know, there's way better front hinge flippers. Like, don't misunderstand me. But by my standards of making mostly terrible robots, I was pretty happy with how this went. Oh my god. Nose one again! <laughs> Oh my god! And of course, Hell's Angel, you can see the improvements. Um, I remember I'm doing those side prongs because the idea was if a robot tries to get round, you know, the, the, there's the side prongs. Never really worked how I hoped it would. Um, and it just ended up becoming part of the aesthetic more than anything. Alright, and then we move on to All Source 4. There you see Hell's Angel change once again. We got... We got the introduction into the heavyweight scene of Death Valley. Um, originally a canine tube blade spinner in uh, Robotal Wars, it was now a grabber and lifter. Um, right now, Hell's Angel is just being pinned. Oh, man. Uh, Ursula is doing its best. Man. Look at that. Dead Nod is. What? I love how, like, in regular Hawks Wars, poor old Norse has a rough time of it, yet here in this video, we're finally giving, like, the Norse robots the respect that they deserve. Oh my goodness. You can see Hell's Angel's just trying to get away. There we go. I remember one of the big things of for Hell's Angel that I never wanted to change was the hammerhead itself, which probably was a bad idea, because... You know, that hammerhead is ludicrous, but it was also the damage dealing potential of it, you know. When Hell's Angel did get a grip on its opponents, it could do a lot of damage. It's just, unfortunately, there was a lot of times where it couldn't get under opponents and didn't get to do much with that hammer. Death Valley, meanwhile, you know, Grabber and Lifter, with the idea being that it was just durable, you know. Yeah, sure, it was... You know, it, you know, I try to make sure I could grab and lift, of course. You know, that is kind of essential. But I wanted it to be that this robot would be reliable and could just keep on trucking, you know, no matter what it got put through. Especially when robots like Hell's Angel could get torn to shreds by a robot like the Dead Norse. I believe that these are... I believe this is a version I've got with the crash patch installed. Um, Orc sent it to me for a special live stream in the future so I don't know if that's shifted how much that's shifted the balancing um you know but again dead nose oh man just as it should always have been and then finally and most recently there's Orcs Wars 5 there you see the last version of Hell's Angel so far. There's old Lord Scarecrow. Uh, <laughs> there's Claymore, which is a robot that I had a fun time. Like, Roboteer is a great builder, and I remember having a lot of fun driving against him in... Uh, it was either pa pa Passing World Series or Passing World Tour. I don't remember. It was probably PWS. Um, but I remember that was a lot of fun. I, I don't know how often Parsec taunts are done anymore, because I think that was always a bit of a rarity. My goodness, Hell's Angel's getting going in! I'm kind of shocked! Um, but yeah, like, uh, you know, like, the, yeah, those are all... I remember, I think, I think, fuck it came first, like, barely first. Um, at the very least, it was one of the first things to use, to, like, have Robot Arena 2 and Parsec, I remember that much. Um, and they, look, oh my god, ah, this was one thing I did like about Hell's Angel here, is that it was able to actually self-right with the hammer. It struggled, <laughs> but it can do it. There we go. But I remember, fuck, it was like one of, if not the first, to use Parsec with uh, Robot Arena 2. Parsec World Series was like, what was the big one? And I had a lot of fun in, in certain fights, you know, finding the likes of, I think it was Bokuma back in the day. You know, I never did exceptionally well, but it was always just fun driving against so many of the people in the community. I think Death Valley once fought a cluster bot at one point. Like, I I could be wrong, but I think it was a freeway cluster bot. Oh! 
No! The streak! It's over! <laughs> no! Oh, no! Orc, uh, Orc and me always struggle with Roboteer robots because they're, so, they're really well built. You can just see poor Hell's Angel struggling like mad. Oh my god. Okay, I think they're caught in a little bit of a... They're caught in that, what I call the, the, the AI death spiral. Oh wait, no, no, no. Hold on, they're going to break out of it. Oh my god, that's a rarity. Normally when that happens, it's the end, because they just get stuck like that forever. This ain't much better, though. <laughs> the only reason that I that I even was came close to ever beating Bokuma, and I say close because I never did, but the only reason I ever came close, though, was because that I remember when we fought each other, uh, Wedgelets used to be able to do like a tiny bit of damage, and so I took the Wedge Edge out. Otherwise, it would have always been... A complete stomping. Still, it meant for a made for a very fun experience where someone as lowly as me could actually have like a decent driving battle with someone as good as Robo. <laughs> oh, uh, there goes there goes Claymore. Oh man. Speaking of Robot Wars, here's a small detour. Uh, there's a there's the second version of Hell's Angel I think I ever built. Um, as you can see, I started putting a stream on, but I wanted it to be aesthetically pleasing. There's the very first version of Wipeout, which, oh my god, I've never seen it in that situation before. Which, I remember that version of Wipeout was actually really good. The Keeper, which you get to see for the first time, that first version was awful, because I originally was building it thinking it was going to be a heavyweight thing, and then it wasn't. Um, so it led to a lot of bizarre design decisions. Um, then you got Blunt Force Trauma, which the idea was, was I wanted to make a Rambot, but I didn't want it to be just any Rambot, you know. I didn't want it to be, because I didn't want it to be boring. So I thought, I will make it for E-Tech Drive, which was absolutely the best decision I could have made. Okay, right now, Wipeout is just struggling. <laughs> there we go. Wipeout was, as usual, the best of the bunch. Um, there was also Death Valley, which I'll show in a moment. Oh my god. It has a lot... It's very unrefined, obviously, but it has a lot of the stuff that I would take forth into newer versions of Wipeout. The flipper is about the same, which allows it to flip things like crazy. It's got that four-wheel drive to allow it to drive around pretty well, though... Um, it took a long time to get even close to the drivetrain that it has here because, again, there was extra weight allowed. Uh, Blunt Force Trauma is doing its thing, you know, it, it's doing its thing, it's, it's doing its best. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. Blunt Force Trauma, what is going on with your AI right now? Is this just... The way that this game, that Robot Wars was AI'd is a little bit baffling sometimes, I will admit. Oh my god, because Lord... Because Blunt Force Trauma hasn't even tried to do anything! I don't know what it's trying to do! Oh, here it comes! You think flipping me will stop me? Yeah, clearly it has, because you've done nothing, Blood Force Trauma. You have done nothing this entire time, and it's slightly concerning. Oh, yeah, I put a bit on the back for some reason. I think it's because, like, the armor on the chassis is basically nothing. So I was like, oh, no, I better do something about that. Okay, well, <laughs> there we go. We found the winner. Oh, my God. <gasps> Blood Force Trauma's alive! I think if it went to the judges, though, let's be real. Death Valley's a good argument as to why I do conceptual robots now, because then I don't have, then I don't end up entering canine chew spinners into tournaments. Anyway, yeah, you got the original version of Death Valley, hence why there was a complete change when it when I made the next version. But it's a little canine chew spinner. It's fast. It's got a little tail. I should bring the tail back. Oh my god, I just realized the back wedge was a thing before. I could bring the tail back. Oh, that's awesome. 
Um, then there's Brimstone, which actually never made it outside of the qualifiers. It nearly did. Um, but yeah, it just never made it. Uh, it's a very simple robot. It's got a hammer. It's got that four-wheel drive. It's actually got the overkill wedge, because I was like, I want this to be unkillable. Oh, poor getting even. I believe that's one of... I believe that's uh, Jim Dramatic's robot, which is why I put it in this fight. Oh, there goes... <laughs> There goes the K9 tube blade, the greatest spinner of all time. The whole thing of getting even, I remember, was like that it was just meant to send robots flying, really. And it actually was like decently effective. Um, then, of course, you got lovely Dead Nose, which Dead Nose was not built for a Bottle Wars. I believe it's still a cool 800 in this 1000 weight class thing. It's basically fighting super heavyweights. Oh! You know what? I sound corrected. You know, I should never doubt you, Hel Dead Nose. Oh my goodness. Oh! And that uh, Brimstone is about to die. That's kind of wild. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Brimstone kind of went on a similar ideology to Hell's Angel, so there's no Shremek. I really thought that the power of the motor would really negate that, but I had a lot to learn at the time. Man, one tournament that I always wanted to enter was Banter Wars. I never got to though. I remember like it was for the longest time this, uh, this crazy stock tournament. And I remember I wanted to try and make like a stock version of Lord Scarecrow to enter. Um, but it just never came to be, unfortunately. Um, you know, I never got that, I never got to do that, which is a shame, because it was such a cool, like, there were so many crazy, like, bots, because similar to the ideology of, like, fuck it, the idea isn't necessarily to be, obviously, you want to win, right? But the hot main idea was mainly to have fun. Oh god, hit and run, no! No! Is hit and run going to win on a technicality because of the way the game works? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Oh my goodness. But you know, it was a fun little time back when it was around. You know, I loved a bit of Banter Wars. Of course, the community wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for all the crazy mods and packs that have been made over the years. Of course, there's DSL, which is the pack you've been seeing pretty much the entire video. You know, the, the mod pack you've been seeing the entire video. But then there's stuff like the BattleBots pack, which is built off of, like, DSL. It's by my good friend Charlie. This is an older version. There's an even older version than this, but there's not. But none of the bots are AI. This is the earliest one I think can find that has the bot AI. You can see Uppercut and Blacksmith, you know, from uh, BattleBots, and as well as Drizzle and Thunderchard, which, you know, were appeared on BuggleBots. And right now, uh, okay, well, Thunderchild in a rare mode is actually being manhandled right now. That's kind of crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, Thunderchild's alive! Thunderchild's alive! No, Thunderchild, what are you doing? Um, oh, Uppercut's dead. The, I've always had a... You know, this has been one of my... You know, the, the BattleBots pack and its continuous evolution has been one of my favorite things in Robot Arena 2. Obviously... DSL still probably is the favorite because it's the part where I'm building the robots and having fun building them, uh, which has given me a big source of joy throughout the years. But in terms of just like pre-made packs, you know, this has been one of the best things to come out of Robot Arena 2. Bye, Drizzle. Uh, bye, Thunderchild. Oh, in comes Drizzle again. Oh! My goodness. Oh, Thunderchild stuck. Oh my god! Okay, Find the Child's done. So it's between Blacksmith and Drizzle now. Drizzle, by the way, is by Team Monsoon. Um, you know, Tom Brewster, I believe, made Drizzle. So, yeah, and Drizzle is basically like if you took Monsoon and Deep Six and made a terrifying Beetleweight child. Okay, I think it's safe to say we know who's won, won this one. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I remember this version of Blacksmith is actually way better than the original. I remember the original was far too top heavy. Um, but, man. I wonder if I can find some footage of me playing the... I'll probably insert some footage of me playing the original over the top of this. There you go, there's another editing note for myself. Oh. 
Oh man. Oh man. Oh, 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 oh my god! Incredible. I think there's a bit of controversy here. I'll leave the judging to you in the comment section. Who do you think won, Drizzle or Blacksmith? Because this one's going to the judges. Uh -huh. And here's the more recent up-to-date version, which if you've been watching my Battle Boss challenges, you'll be very familiar with. And you also know that there's going to be a crash in the very near future. Because unfortunately, one thing that I've learned through playing this pack, you know, from the comments, thankfully, is that basically, when it comes to the models, basically, the way, one, the way that Charlie gets these so good is he makes, like, these models all, you know, complex and whatnot, so they match the robots. Unfortunately, Robot Arena 2 being as old as it is, a certain amount of faces and it'll just crash entirely upon taking damage, whereas in this part, there's just enough, you know, there's less faces so it won't crash immediately, but it will crash upon sparking with a lot of these robots. Um, it's not something you all need to worry about, trust me, but if you, you know, when it comes to the Battlebots pa oh my god, Mammoth's been decapitated. But when it comes to the more complex robots in this pack, it can be a bit of a concern. My goodness. Okay, okay, Tantrum, you can leave Claw Viper alone. It's dead. It's it's flopping around like a fish out of water. Oh my god. Mammoth. How oh, are you still going? Oh, what is this? Oh, it's gruesome. <laughs> I love the way Claw Viper's moving around. Oh my god, what is going on? Why is it like this? Oh my god. I think it's safe to say Tantrum's got this. Like, the moment it takes Peter out, I think we could, like, and the game crashes, I think we could safely say that Tantrum has this one. Oh my god. That's amazing. Good God. Oh my goodness. Okay, Claw Viper's finally being counted out. Its suffering is about to come to an end. There we go. It's just down to these three now, and let's be real. What is Mammoth really here about? Like, what's Mammoth really going to do at this point? God. Okay. Okay. There we go. That's Beta done. Mammoth? <laughs> is Mammoth, how is Mammoth still going? Oh no, Mammoth, what have you done? Why, Mammoth, why? You did not need to do this to yourself. Okay, someone's getting counted out. Okay, it looks like it's Mammoth getting counted out, I think. <laughs> okay, this is for the best. Oh my god, that was brutal! But yeah, that is definitely one of the best packs right now, but... Thankfully, there is some more work being done. Like, hold on, let me find it. Because one thing that is also being worked on is... Uh, oh, where's my controller? Is a Robot Wars pack. It, that can work in conjunction to the BattleBots pack. This one's being worked on by Sajaris. And I got a lot of excitement for this because obviously I love Robot Wars. And it's great to get to have more robot, you know, to have a bunch of Robot Wars robots that can take on the BattleBots competitors. So I'm honestly excited. I believe the Robot Wars thing is going to be its own standalone pack. It's more just happy accident that it also works with the BattleBots pack. But... Sajaris has been wanting me to try out the robots, and so far they've been a lot of fun having them battle the BattleBots competitors. So, without a doubt, when that gets finished, I will definitely be giving that a big shout out. But of course, there is another Robot Wars pack. GSL. Well, technically there's two, but I can't get the other one to work because I did a thing where I deleted duplicate files, and so it doesn't work. 
Um, there's a video on screen of what it used of that other one, but the one you will know and hopefully love. A classic pack and another one of my favorites of all time, the Robot Wars pack, which, my God, this thing was amazing. Oh, there goes Eruption. <laughs> Taken out by Shremaking. It's like Shremaking Sewer Snake. That's incredible. But, you know, it was just so much fun. It was like one of the earlier examples of being able to play with, like, real-life robots in Robot Arena 2, at least for me, anyway. It's got... All, it's it works in very differently to any other robot arena 2 pack obviously which leads to these like surprise like very well done versions of robots like behemoth and sewer snake and typhoon 2 and tornado and all these other robots um it's not uh, while it's labeled robots pack it's more of a robot war slash robo games pack really um it also has its own balancing which means that it's very different from anything else in robot arena 2. Like, flippers can do damage. Um, you know, like, it, it's, it's got its own balancing system separate from anything else. But it's always been a fun little pleasure of mine just to play this pack. Hence why, even after all these years, I'm still doing videos with it. There we go. Okay, so seriously, took out every <laughs> robot there. Oh, my God. Also, it hit me that there is another Robot Wars pack. Now, subject to the next fucking, I'm pretty sure, and made by my good buddy, Jim Dramatic. Oh, yeah, I forgot I've got to drive these myself. Um, oh, I don't have the controls for any of the others. Hold on. There we go. Is the Robot Wars Series 2 pack. I've, been, uh, I've got to double check the recording, but I'm pretty sure this is the pack we use for our next fuck it. Which, by the way, yes, Jim Dramatic is returning for another fuck it. Let's go. Uh, this is an amazing, like, f fun bit of, uh, fun pack of some robots that really would never get remade otherwise. You've got robots like Napalm, PS The Resistance, Megahertz, Aurac. It's a fun little time! It's a fun little time! Now, here's a pack that I keep promising myself that I'll, that I'll use and showcase in the future, but then I just keep forgetting to. I don't know what the controls are for those robots so i can't do much with them but yeah this is another pack that i'd like to try and showcase more in the future king of bots oh man there's not much more to say here really because none of the bots are ai'd i can't figure out the controls for half of the robots but you know it's a lovely fun little thing really look at that i can whack it's not easy to whack but it works which is pretty cool Oh, man. But yeah, I'd like to definitely do more with this in the future. And look! 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 It's Dragon King! Ah! I'm gonna be real, I don't think I ever did much with Iron Forge. But it is a kind of a, 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 a little bit of an anomaly. Oh, God. There we go. I don't think- I don't have action cam either. Oh, man. Look at them go. But it's crazy to think of all the different ways that RE2 has just been worked on and modded over the years. I think I've got to do a video on Iron Forge at some point in the future. Yeah, people play DSL more, but I think this could be an interesting thing to do. Let me know. Like, do you want to see me experiment with Iron Forge and see if I can make some robots in it? Because that'd be kind of a... Because, you know, obviously it's its own entity, so it should be interesting to see what could be done with it. Oh, man. Okay, it's down to... It's down to Silverfish and Beer Goggles. And uh, I think I'm going to rate the massive, gigantic vert over the tiny bots. Oh my god, those tracks look so cool though. My god. Ooh. Ouch. Yeah, that's not great. Okay, they're in a dev spiral. Let's just check. Let's take a look. Oh my god. I did in fact make a robot called What in the Fuck is Iron Forge? And it's...
<lacht> oh, boah. <lacht> fit zu fit. Oh, my God. Because Unforge has a 600 weight limit and I managed to make it fit. Oh, that's amazing. Oh. Here's another one that I've never tried before, called G50. I don't know anything about it, admittedly. I think it is made by the same people? Question mark? I don't know. Admittedly, I don't know. This is another one. Hey, if you want me to try it out, then uh, I mean, you know, I w I'm willing to do it. Man, there's so many different avenues that I could d take still with Robot Arena 2. So yeah, let me know if you want to see me play these other versions. Because, oh my goodness. This looks ridiculous. What is... Oh my god. Okay, so that's great. That's great fun then. Oh my god, it's just shooting grapes everywhere. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is incredible! Okay, I've definitely got to make a video on this. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me do more with this one. Look at the points Pizza Crazy's getting! What is happening? Hold on, I need to count this. Three million, four, five hundred, four million and two, that is insane. What is happening? Oh, that's absolutely ridiculous, but I love it. Oh my god, what is this? I've never tried this before, but I'm so glad that I've downloaded it. Oh, that's insane. Great Crazy, are you okay? Oh my god, there it goes again. I don't think any of these robots are even close to actually dying. What is the point system in this mod? What is anything in this mod? Hold the f- Whoa! Whoa! Oh! I'm going insane. The point system in this is actually ridiculous. And so far I don't think anything has broken on these robots. Oh! Except for physics, you know, but... Oh my... Holy cow, what? I've never seen anything like this before. I am in... Sh I'm in disbelief, honestly. Oh my god. Uh, great fun has gone wild. How is Great Fun still here? What are the points? Peter Crazy has 13 million points. Okay. Okay, great fun. Okay, uh, great fun is now in the floor. That's why the frame rate's gone down. This is uh, absolutely bonkers. I've never, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> oh my god! What is? Hold on. 16 million, 474,597. What the? Oh my god, this is the girl. This is incredible. I I've got to do more with this. Oh man.
the RA2 tech demo. We really are diving in now. Look at this. Oh, there goes Nightmare. Yeah, for some reason, Nightmare is in this. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure they didn't have the, the uh, permission. Oh. And you can see, this is a little bit of a tech demo thing that is available on Game Tech Mods. I don't know how to do anything in this, honestly. Oh my god! And... Um... There I go! Great match! Welcome and of course, where would we be Arena. without Robot Arena 2's vanilla version? The game that started it all, the game that made it even, that made all of this even possible. Yeah, it's basic. It's very basic nowadays. But without it, we wouldn't be enjoying all that crazy stuff I showed throughout this video. Here we go. Oh, and we're off. Coal miner, emergency. I sent in uh, <laughs> I sent in tornado because I felt like it'd be a better shot at trying to win this because it can actually self right. And we do have emergency here, so it's all invertible robots to so just have a semblance of a hope that someone can beat it. But let's be real, it's emergency. My goodness. And I don't even want to get into all the stuff I did back in the day on, like, vanilla RA2. It, like, it goes without saying at this point. It's like, it was a crazy time. Lots of fun was had. I made all kinds of just insane, like, crazy robots. Barbarian being one of them. If you want to see those, there's uh, some old, old videos I made back in the day. I even made a video revisiting that, that you know, back in the day as well. Now, for me, the adventure began here on the 22nd of November, 2014. Nearly nine years ago now. It's crazy to think that, like, this game is nearly 20 years old, and I've been in the community for, like, well, maybe not, maybe, not, like, I'd say people would say debatable that I was in the community because I'm always just on the outskirts, but I've been playing the game for nearly half of the lifespan of this game's community. I've seen so many crazy things from out this time. Man, lots of fun has been had. And from the looks of it, we're far from done. Now, of course, one question I get asked on the regular is, how do I get to play? How do I get to play Robot Arena 2? Well, it's actually really simple. So what we're going to... So you can actually see the downloads here, but let's pretend we can't see those. You know, I do not see it. So the first thing you do is you go onto Downloads, and you go onto Working Game. Now, there's several versions as we've been over, and the two versions I'd recommend most is the vanilla version of Robot Arena 2 and DSL. Robot, the vanilla version, I think, is great for anyone who's just beginning with the game, who really just wants to get started. But DSL is where the majority of the community is, so... Without a doubt, that one is the one that I'd also recommend extremely highly. Other ones are the RE2 Mod Plus and the BattleBots Pack, though the BattleBots Pack you'd have to download elsewhere. I'll leave the drive link that I put together with the different versions. You'll want the one labelled Unofficial Update. Anyway, we'll just download DSL for this. Anyway, now that you've got the zip folder, the next step is to, well, unzip it. So we do it like so. Simple as that, really. You've got to have, like, a program like WinRAR, WinZip. Well, actually, you probably don't even need that. Hell, if you've only got the Windows stuff, you it's just a simple case of highlighting and then just dragging it into the folder you want. Anyway, now that we've got the game unzipped, the next step, for me at least, is to go look for ra2.cfg. Now, you'll find a notepad folder looking like this. Basically, what we want to do here is we just want to make sure that it matches our resolution. So in my case, 1920 by 1080. 
just once more, 1920 by 1080. Just doing that, just make sure it fits our screen. It's not essential, it's just what I like to do. One thing you might want to double check as well is if you got a widescreen UI fix, just grab that, like so. And we're just going to bring it over into DSL just to make sure that there's no issues when we start the game up. You'll see two versions of the game, RA2 Component Freedom. We're going to ignore that for now as we're not building at the moment. But if you want to build, this can be a helpful thing. But Robot Arena 2 is also just as good for building. So, but the original install is also just good. It, it doesn't matter really. You know, it just depends on the level you want to build at. This will become more useful the more competent you get at building. Anyway, so we start up. And the first thing I realized is that I didn't set it to full screen. DSL conversion. But that's fine. You can see that the game is working. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to very quickly set it to full screen. You see, in the past, I had run into problems before where not running it in full screen has actually caused the game to crash. So doing that just puts me at ease. Now, because I had to do that, I had to fix the resolution again. That's my bad, but, you know, I'm going to leave it in because then it shows you the mistake, you know, what mistakes not to make. So you do that afterwards, but now that we got it working, as you can see, DSL now works a treat. DSL Talk. This pretty much works for every version of Robot Arena 2, and it means now you can build, you can just do whatever, really. These old games can be prone to crashes because, again, this is a very old game now, but it should allow you to be able to enjoy the crazy fun, really, of these games. And there you have it, everyone. Robot Arena 2. 20 years of just incredible fun, some incredible robots made by so many amazing people over the years, some amazing packs and mods that have made it all possible, and of course, the base game, which really, you know, we can't thank the original dev team enough for that. Think about it. There has been, obviously there's the original, but nobody plays that. There was an attempt at a sequel which couldn't match this game's magic. And there's, and it's only take, it's taken 20 years really for us to get games that might one day supersede it if Robot Rumble 2, Pitbots, um, and stuff like Bashbots. You know, it's taken such a long time to be able to get stuff that are alternatives to this experience in the 20 years that this game has been around. Honestly, and I want to thank you all as well for watching. Like, whether you watched me from the beginning nearly nine years ago, or you're watching today, you all made this possible for me. I never would have expected the, you know, my Robot Arena 2 videos to do nearly as well as they have done. I remember back then I was just making, grand, I, like I always have, I make videos on games that I enjoy. And Robot Arena 2 happened to be one of them, and I never expected it to get nearly the love that it ended up getting. So, I can't thank any of you enough for that. You've made all of this possible for me. But with that all being said, I hope to see you all next time. Plenty more videos on the way. With that all being said, yeah, I'm going to get going now. Bye, guys. I think we can give that one to Icepick. Let's go.